Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to share the story of a person whose name is Connor. You are watching Red Cheating Stories. And my name is Shada Papa. Before moving towards the story, I would like to ask you to please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for the latest updates. So Connor says I was 36 years old and I have three beautiful and talented children, two boys and a girl. So my older one is 12 years old. The middle one is my girl who is 10 years old and my little one is only 3 years old. His name is David. He's also so innocent. My wife's name is Emma. She's the most beautiful woman of all time. I'm so grateful for her in every way. After three weeks, baby still, she looks young and beautiful. She is also a good cook and one year back, she had also started her job, but she had some flaws too. She is too bossy, always bossing around the house. She is a cleaning freak, always cleaning the house and she is a little impulsive, but there are thorns. You know with the flow. So I love her so much. I love my family. I love being with them. Everything is fine, but I didn't know that a hurricane is coming into our area. And our society, the society was on high alert for long seven days. There will be no phones and no internet. But thank God our house is hurricane proof. Still, we have to make some arrangements to make it safer. But the day the hurricanes were supposed to hit and we all thought we were going to finish everything and go to the basement and stay there for seven days. My wife didn't come home and she ended up leaving this message in voicemail that I was at my friend Julie's house. The car has broken down. Now, the situation is bad. I can't go out. I will come after seven days, take care of yourself and the children. I was very worried, you know, I was very worried for my wife and my children. The storm was not to swear, but we had to be careful because you do know that what trust in nature when it flares up. The children will also sad for their mother. I was consoling them. I missed my wife a lot but after seven days, she came back safe and sound, and as I hugged her, my attention went to her perfume because it was not her usual scent. Maybe she was staying at her friend's house. She used her things, but this smell was a men's perfume and her friend was not married. She met the children and asked how your seven days passed. And she suddenly said, very wonderful. And I was surprised when she became serious, like a little nervous. I said that you were the first person who has survived a hurricane and said that it was wonderful. We were worried about you and David was crying so bad. They were even thinking that you are not in the world and were trapped somewhere and they're never going to see you again. It was that serious. My love. So my wife said, I'm just kidding. How I have spent these seven days only. I know. And Julie is quite a religious type. She has been reading the Bible all the time since she was so stressed. Thank God that you all are fine. I hugged my wife in my special way and took a deep breath. Tell her what I want. She used to understand my actions, but today she didn't understand. I said, let's go to the bedroom. Children are also watching TV. I said, come on, I want to make love with you. But she refused to say, no my love. I'm too tired. I was wondering how she's tired after resting for seven days. I mean, she didn't have any work for seven days. Our life is kind of hectic. She had her job. I had mine. We were only free on weekends and life with three children is quite difficult. You have to do a lot of house chores and have to maintain a proper house with it. I thought she was joking but she was serious. She said I have to take a bath and then go to sleep and order food today because I'm not in the mood of cooking. She didn't even thank me or said anything that I have taken care of our children for seven days without her. I am missing her. So you know, she can at least hug me back with love. She lived there and I was surprised even after that, her behavior was not right in the coming days, we came close but there were no feeling in this love. She was with me, but her soul is lost somewhere. It seemed she was doing her duty. 
I don't know what happened to her life went on like this and everything was fine except for my wife's behavior, children had their own lives. They might not be able to feel it. But I was feeling everything. Then I thought that maybe she was angry with me for something she kept in her heart. So I made a good plan for a date, night dinner in a posh hotel and also told her that being ready at 8 p.m. today, you know, tonight will be a beautiful night for us. I also gave her a beautiful dress to wear as a gift. I asked her to call our children's men for one night. And when Sunday night came and I came home, I saw that my wife was looking very beautiful. But with me, my three children were also ready to go somewhere and looked very happy. Those people were so happy that I had told them that we are not going anywhere. They would have been heartbroken. I asked my wife if Nanny didn't come and she said that she was busy and they all wanted to go. But I asked my wife if Nanny didn't come and she said that, you know, I couldn't, I would call her so a romantic date that was supposed to be in a nice hotel. Now with the family, it's different. It was quite a romantic hotel that I booked, you know, a candlelight dinner, soft music and nothing that my kids like it was a seafood hotel. I have to cancel the booking on the way and we went to KFC Kids a lot of fun and my whole plan got ruined. I was very sad and angry too. You know, I mean, my wife had already known that it is our date night. Then why had she let that happen if our nanny is on leave or was busy or if she was busy, she could have taken one minute to call her, you know, and then she could have called another one. She can explain to the children that we are not going to take them this time. We have to eat at home and go to sleep. I'm not being one of those people who only think for themselves and burn their blood. I thought I'd talk to my wife and one day I told her that I have talked to you about something very important. I thought that I'd like to, you know, discuss everything with her, but she was not giving me time. She was running away from me. And my words too. One day I got a call from my elder son that there is nothing at home to eat. We are starving. I said that today your mama is off from the office, told her to cook for you. I'm not on holiday. I'm too busy. My son is asking me for my credit card number and code so he can order food. But I said I can't do anything. I told him to will, you know, I, he has to tell the mama that make food for you because today was my my wife's holiday. But my son rained me to such a thing. I left all my work and immediately ran home the way I was thinking that why on earth my wife is doing this. My son told me that mama have locked herself in the room and she's not coming out a little while ago. An uncle also came who is in the room with his mother. I was very surprised and angry as well. I felt like there will be a chemical reaction in my brain. You know, and my wife called home with whom she was in the room. And the children were also getting to know this instead of giving them food. What is she doing in the room with this person? I reached home and I went to my room and started knocking on the door to see who was inside and was surprised to hear that my wife also knocking from inside and that the door was locked and she was freaking out somehow opened the door. I couldn't find the key. But from the voice of my wife, it seemed that she was very nervous. I quickly looked for the he had opened the door. My wife and a man were stuck. My wife said the door of the room was broken since morning. So I called the lockmaster to fix it, but it got locked from the inside. I was very scared that the person was also saying, Sir, it is not my fault. This door is very strong. I would have broken the door, but you would have suffered a lot of expense. That that's why I was trying to make the door open by itself. I gave him money and told him to leave here. We will fix the door myself. My wife said not to invite anyone to such a house in future. You could have told me this too. My wife said, I thought that today today is my day off. So I should do some work at home. I was feeling so bad. Even the poor children were afraid. I said that okay, it's okay. Don't worry, there is no need to be afraid. I asked my wife to sit comfortably and order the food. 
After a while the food came and we ate together and also told the children that the door was locked from the inside. So until the room was out of the order, no one will close the door from this room until the door is not fixed at night. My wife came to me and fell asleep in my arms today, I felt very good to sleep with her like this because after many, many days, she came to me by herself. But I was still wondering about one thing, what I didn't think about before is that the door was to be opened with the key. Then my wife could tell this to my eldest son as well. He was so big and wise that he would go and pick up the key and open the door. He was twelve years old. He was not a small child and he was knocking on the door. My wife could have told him to, but I don't know when it came, he told me. But the person inside was doing the same thing because I had seen him doing it before and it looked a bit suspicious. One day I came to know about something that I was surprised. I got a call from one of my friends who was the doctor. He said your wife is ill and you didn't come with her. He said, what does this mean? He said your wife is pregnant again. She came to the hospital today. I have seen her going to the pregnancy ward but today she was alone. Are you too busy to come with your wife? At first you used to come with her for all three children. A woman gives birth to a child and it hurts a lot. At least you should have come with her. I said that you must have misunderstood and he said that I have not misunderstood. Why are you talking like this? That I lied to my friend that you know, I had very important work today. If I didn't go to the work today, I would have been fired. You know, that's why I sent her along. I asked him if you talked to her and he said no, I was busy too, but I saw her while passing by but she was alone. I said I will come to you and I hung up the phone after talking to my friend. But my wife, she was pregnant. Then why didn't she tell me this? Me? She comes back. She will surprise me that I was going to be a dad again at this. I was happy but was surprised to see that my wife had returned and so had I, but she still did not speak to me after I thought she might tell me in the night. Even though she did not say anything. I asked her if you want to tell me something. She said, no, there is nothing like that. If I have to tell you something, I will tell you. I will not wait for a while. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, there's nothing like that. Now, I was sure that there is something bad. And the only way to find out is that the hospital my wife went to had a policy that when a woman came in with the with her pregnancy, she would fill out a form in in which the mother and the father's name was written. We have been there three times. That's why I was sure about it. Now I just had to go to that form and which my wife had done today and I had to do it quickly. I went to the hospital the next day and there, you know, because of my friend as he was a doctor there, I had to do it quickly. I had to tell my friend everything because he was very worried and was asking me again and again after that. The form came into my hands in which the truth is written, I was going to open it and see it and I was surprised to see that in this form, my name was not written. Instead of my name, there was a name of a person whose name was Jack, it was written. And after that, it was also found out that there was something else too. My friend comforted me and asked what I will do. I said I have thought of what I will do when my third son, David came into the world. I made my first two children sit in front and I explained very well that you are going to have another brother. They both started crying with joy. After that, I sat with my three children and wife in front of them and said, I want to tell you something very important. I was very happy. They were thinking, you know, maybe it is a good news. My girl said, are you taking us to Disneyland? Daddy? I said, I will take you there as well. But this good news is too great. And I told my children that your mother is deceiving us all. She is going to be a mother again. But this child is not mine and David is not your brother, but his father is someone else. I told my kids and they were shocked, they knew I was not kidding. They started crying because they were shocked at what happened to us. My wife was also shocked and she said, why are you doing this? There's nothing like that. I showed all the proof to my wife and told her that you have cheated on me, 
your bitch if we both came to the room and she was shouting badly, but found out that lying will not do anything. So she admitted that she cheated on me and gave in and said that she has been having an affair with the same person for the last seven years who came to this house. She said that he came to the house and he locked the door while I told him that my children are at home. But he was too anxious for me. I had tears in my eyes. I said that David is not my son but for the people of the world and he, I am his father. You cheated on me for seven years, you bitch and didn't let me know about it after all, what kind of a person are you? I love you so much yet you did all this to me. I can't see you at my house. That's why I tell everything to the kids to mentally prepare them that their mother is going to fucking leave this house. My wife said, okay, but we have to find a way because David is not your child. If I leave here, then I will take him with me. I said you can't take him from me. You cheat her bitch. She left that house, but we filed the case against each other and she wanted to take David from me and maybe she would have done this. But her case was very weak because of the man who she was going with. He did not earn enough money to support two children. And then the biggest mistake happened, he suddenly said in front of the judge that I don't want to have any relationship with this woman. And I can't handle my first child and the second child to come, my wife was probably punished for her mistake. She was in a very bad condition. But I also couldn't take her with me because if it happened once or twice, I might have thought that she was also a woman and it must have been a mistake, but she was cheating on me for the last seven years. And this matter is unburied. I can't forget this. I came back to my home, you know, taking my children with me and now all four of us live together and don't even talk about my wife. My children also know that what she did was wrong, 